morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome all of you to church this morning, whether you're in line, online, or in person. And also those who may be here for the first time, and also all those who are very regular attenders. This morning, we will be having our annual meeting during our church service, which will include a brief time of worship followed by the meeting to which all are invited and encouraged to attend. We are asking the people online to accept the invitation of Stevens to join the webinar as the annual meeting is started. The online people will be able to vote by answering the polls that will be presented during the annual meeting. And these votes will be recorded by our secretary, Mike Hulls. Are there any announcements? Uh, the official board of Emmanuel United Church is very pleased to announce that Reverend Brenda Torrey, M. Div, has been appointed our short-term supply minister beginning March 1st for a period of six months. Emmanuel will have the option to review this appointment twice if we and Brenda wish to do so. Brenda has seven years experiencing working in the Methodist Church, United Methodist Church as a minister, most recently in Wyoming. And that's cold there too. <laughs> for the folks who have been attending Emmanuel for many years, you'll remember that the Tory family attended church with us very many years ago. Brenda and her husband, Michael, have made the decision to return home last year, and we are pleased that she was both able as well as willing to join us. A welcoming lunch for Brenda will be held on March the 19th, and the board will supply soup and sandwiches and a cake. <laughs> Brenda is going to be having a Lenten Bible study starting on March the 2nd, to March the 30th at every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Details are in the Emmanuel Weekly. Um, next Sunday, we're going to revive the children's coin collection. This is a chance for you to get rid of your coins that have been accumulating in those places at your home, especially when you empty out all your pockets and your change purse, we can just do it here. We have chosen the Children's Need Distribution Center as our 2023 recipient. The Children's Need <laughs> Distribution Center is an outreach program at Highland Baptist Church in Kitchener. It is in unique in that it focuses on children who have been helping families provide for their children since 1993. Are there any other announcements? We'll now have the call to worship. Friends, for the sake of love, we are here. Yeah. Reflecting on our call to be the church, deciding how best to invite Christ in the world, striving for justice and compassion, humility and peace. Let the unity of our oneness in Christ draw us together. Please stand if you're at table as we say our creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is created. For this time in Jesus, the Word made flesh to reconcile and make new. Who works 
hear us and understand by the Spirit, that you trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with the respect of creation, to love and to serve others, to teach us to listen to his people, to proclaim Jesus who is crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life and in death, in life and beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Our opening hymn was number 401, and voices united. Worship the Lord. We'll now have the prayer of approach, and we will do this in unison. 
Generous God, giver of good and perfect gifts, we lift our voices today to express our thanks and praise for family and friends, for our homes and this church community, for your abiding and life-giving successes. We say thank you for your love, which knows no bounds, and for allowing us to share your love with others. We sing your praise. May us deeply aware of your presence today. This is Daniel Eason Sunday. As we gather with the day of worship, worship in Jesus' name. Amen. I will now be turning the service over to the Reverend Ross Vincent Haven, who is our pastoral chair supervisor. She will be holding this position until we call a new minister to our community faith. We need a pastoral church supervisor, as Brenda has not yet been accepted into the United Church of Canada. where we can come together? That's a good answer. That's a good answer. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Yeah, to me? Yeah, it's, it's a place, but it's more than a place. I mean, when I was a little girl, so I'm about your age, we you used to play a game. Maybe some of you out there played this game. It's a finger game. Do you want to help me with this? And maybe the lady you know. So you take your fingers like this, like this, and you turn them over. And then you put your two thumbs together, like that. And this is the church. You say, this is the church. Can you say that with me? This is the church. And this, put your pointing fingers up together, is the steeple. Now we open those doors, open your thumb, and we turn our fingers over, and we see all the people. Anybody out there in the congregation on this when you're little? Yeah. Yeah, but I think we got a lot of hands up there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I have something important to tell you. The church is not a building. The church is the people. You know, in the in the biblical times, before before people spoke English or before the Bible was written in English, they used to use Greek. And the word for church in Greek is ecclesia. 
And it comes from two words in Greek. It comes from carols, with, which is calling, and the prefix ek, which is oh, so calling out. So really what church is, is an assembly or a gathering of those called out, those who believe in Jesus. So actually, the church is the people. So you're the church, I'm the church, the ladies the church, we're all church together. And we want to think about that, right? As we're having our annual meeting Sunday. Because without us, there wouldn't be church. Church is the people. Now I have a song that I'd, I'd like to teach you today. Would you like to learn the song? Would you like to learn the actions? Okay, so the chorus goes like this. And some of you out there might know it. It's an old song, because I'm an old lady. And, um, and it, it goes, of course, it goes like this. I am the church, we point to ourselves. You are the church, so we point out there. We would put our hands up, we are the church together. And we go, all follow Jesus, all around the world. And then we make a big yes sign. We are the church together, and that's the chorus. You did a great job, great job. Now I'm going to tell you what the words are, and then we're going to sing it together, and I think that uh, your mom and Robert would help us. So it says exactly what we were saying here today. It says, the church is not a building. The church isn't a steeple, so none of that stuff. The church isn't a resting place. Well, sometimes, sometimes people want to sleep. <laughs> but the church is a people. And then we do it again. Okay, you ready? I am the church. I am the church. You do it. You are the church. We are the church together. All of all of Jesus. All around the world. Yes, we're the church together. There are many kinds of people with many kinds of faces, all colors, and all ages too in all kinds and places. So we do it again, you ready? I am the church, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together, you done? All of all of Jesus, all around the world, you want to do a big yes? Yes, we are the church together. <laughs> and then the final verse is, you're with me girl. And when the people gather, like we are here today and virtually, they're singing, and we are going to sing now. And there's praying. Yeah. Yeah. There's laughing. There's a lot of laughing. Yeah. And sometimes there's crying too. And it's all saying, okay, now we're going to do a big finale. You ready? Are you ready, the lady out there? I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All the ball of Jesus. All around the world. Yes, we're the church together. Okay, so would you like to come up and help us sing that? We're going to sing it together, and uh, everybody who would like to stand can do that, and then we're going to have a little prayer. Okay, that work? Okay, you want to stand up with me? you got to stand there, okay? All right, all right, then we're going to come.
think we're going to sing again. No, we're not. I'd like to invite Lynn, my partner, up to do scripture. And has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of a body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body was hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as God chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, and then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you still more excellent way. May God grant to our understanding this reading from Holy Scripture. Thank you, Lynn. We're going to sing again. This time we're singing hymn number 510, Voices United, We Have This Ministry.
please be seated. Please be seated. Dear guests, friends, help transform lives, inspire meaning and purpose, and build a better world here at home and around the world through our community of faith and by, by joining hands together through mission and service. Let us now share our gifts. Let us say our offering prayer together. Gracious and loving God, bless the gifts we offer as one body of Christ. We pray that they bring healing and hope to everyone whose lives they touch. Amen. We now turn in prayer this day as the people of God here in this place. Let us pray. Oh, we have seen many challenges this year, O oh God. We have also experienced many blessings. We give thanks for all those who made time to reach out to isolated members in our community this year. During a time when so many suffered from isolation, receiving a phone call and or card meant knowing someone cared and made people who were struggling feel less alone. We give thanks for leaders of our official board, trustees, session, and board committees who met far more than usual this year to try to adapt to new ways of being church. Their faithfulness and commitment anchored us and ensured that our ministry would continue come what may. We give thanks for our personnel committee who encouraged us on, on our most difficult days and applauded us on our most successful ones. Their encouragement and support energized us to continue to listen for and lean into God's call. We give thanks for those who ensured that we could continue to worship together. We are grateful for this, our staff, Aura, our office manager, who keeps us connected through Emmanuel Weekly and remains a friendly presence here day after day. For David, who ensures our building is clean and maintained. Nancy, who leads our worship with music and song. And Wendy, who keeps a faithful eye on our financial resources. We are thankful for our tech team for maintaining security in the building and ensuring that online worship as well as worship in this sanctuary goes smoothly each Sunday. Their support meant we could join with open hearts to the peaceful, loving presence of the Spirit alongside of us and one another. We give thanks for Waterloo Wayside and all the staff and volunteers who, for days a week, feed the hungry, clothe those who are cold and needy, distribute food for empty cupboards, and give companionship to those who were already vulnerable. Every gift given brought a little more love into the world. We give thanks for those who gave generously to our common mission and service. 
by joining with caring members across the country, we were able to have an enormous impact helping to transform lives at home and abroad in concrete ways together. We are thankful. We give thanks for all the behind the scenes volunteers, the needlecraft friends who provide warm, beautiful and useful items for those within our church and in the community. We give thanks for those who ensure our finances are in order, who maintain our building and keep it safe, for those who take minutes at meetings, sort clothes and food for wayside, and do many other tasks that allow us to be church together. Together, these humble tasks are the backbone of our church and truly enable our ministry to happen. As we give thanks, we also pray for those families and those among us who are suffering from illness, loss, or personal burdens too hard to carry alone and need your loving support. We remember before you this day, little Oakley Bonner and his family, Joanna Lund, Sandra and Arf Groth's granddaughter, Jamie, the Hansel family, the Ruhl family, Paul Dixon and Doris Lemon, and all others in our hearts, not spoken, but known to you. Strengthen and support them all, we pray. God of deep blessing and undying love, continue to unfold us in a spirit of gratitude. Let, us carry, let it carry us into the year ahead, choosing to focus on our abundant grace and grateful and thankful for responding to your call. We are the church for the sake of love. In every decision going forward, let love be our guide. We continue to pray the way of Jesus, saying together, our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And I now turn the annual meeting over to our chair of our official board, uh, Neil. Neil will say, go and go to this person. All right, thank you. So the pandemic has not diminished our mission. The central call to love as Jesus loves is the same as it has ever been. When we meet as committees or teams, whatever they may be, and as we meet today to reflect on the year past and year to come, we aren't just ticking off agenda items. We're meeting for the sake of love. When you're discussing the budget, our discussions are an expression of love. When we are schlepping around fixing God knows what in this building, and that's we usually if Stephen and Murray don't get there first, or setting up a live stream, um, in whatever form that may take, that work is an expression of love. When we are recording minutes, balancing books, and doing all the behind the scenes coordinating and organizing, we do that for love. When you are trying to figure out how to best comfort spirits and soothe hearts, even while we feel dislocated ourselves, we are all about love. Today, I'm not going to tell you really anything new. I'm just going to remind you and me of who we are today here together, the body of Christ. Um, so just before we go any further, as Roz said, if you have any questions, um, in, in particular for those um, online who can't necessarily hear somebody calling from the floor, we have this microphone right here that you can come and you can speak to me and ask your question. And similarly, for those of you who are online, if you have a question, um, I guess you can, I can't tell. You do have the raise hand option, you can do that. And then I think Stephen is online monitoring things and he will let me know that somebody has a question. And we will go from there. I think everybody's so, pretty much. 
All right, so everybody has been invited to be a panelist. Some of you turned your cameras on, others have not. That is okay. So Stephen, if I could have you switch over to our mission statement and we can say that together then. So together, in response to God's love and guided by Christ's spirit, we journey together a growing, nurturing, forgiving, and affirming community, joyfully celebrating our faith and reaching out to all with compassion and hope. And the acknowledgement of territory. We acknowledge the traditional territory upon which we are gathered. <clears throat> in 1784, the Haldeman Treaty granted a tract of land to the Haudenosaunee Six Nations Iroquois peoples as compensation for their alliance with British forces during the American Revolution. This tract includes 10 kilometers on either side of the Grand River, which is known as the Haldeman Tract. The original peoples of this land include the Adirondran, also known as the Neutral Peoples, the Anishinaabe, and the Anishinaabe, pardon me. Today, less than 5% of this territory remains Six Nations land. And then together, the original peoples have sought to walk gently on this land, and we endeavor to follow their example. We seek a new relationship with First Nation peoples through truth, reconciliation, and we actively seek right relations based in honor and with deep respect. I'm just going to check my time. <clears throat> I'm going to call the meeting to order then at 10.40, 10 um, Funny story, last week the church clock was ahead by, behind by five minutes, so we fixed it. And then when I got here yesterday, it was ahead by five minutes. So. Honestly, the Lord knows what the clocks are saying. So the attendance sheet is circulating with Amanda Broderick. So please write your name there. Um, if, as you're filling out the attendance sheet, you're aware of anybody who has regrets, please write them, note them there. Um, and for those of you who are attending online, provided you have used your correct name and one we recognize, it will be recorded in the minutes as well. And I thank you all for coming and joining us. The annual report was distributed ahead of time online. So, so those of you online should have received a copy. If you prefer a hard paper copy like I do, there were a handful over by the tower stairs. And if you'd like one, you can just raise a hand and perhaps Amanda or Eric can go find one. So we have a series of motions and the way this is gonna work is how it's worked in the past. I will announce the motion, ask for a mover and a seconder then we will hold the vote. For those in the sanctuary, it'll just be a simple hands up. Uh, all those in favor, you put your hand up. All those opposed, or abstentions. For those online, Stephen is going to launch a poll. And the poll will pop up on your screen, give you a checkbox of which, you know, do you approve? Um, disprove, I think is the word, object. Oh, I forget what the wording is. Yes, no, or I don't know. And then Stephen's just gonna confirm that everybody online uh, voted and that if, if they agree and we agree, then we move on to the next motion. I don't anticipate anything um, too controversial here, but what do I know? So the first motion we have, and Stephen, if you can put that up at your leisure, is to grant full participation of adherence at this congregational meeting. And so the motion reads, to grant all adherents the rights to fully participate and vote during this congregational meeting. Uh, we've been making this motion for multiple years now um, and the, the short version of why we do this is because one or two general councils ago United Church um, expanded what we consider people who can participate in the church. Um, in the past if you're baptized and confirmed in the church you then counted as a member and others you could attend but maybe you hadn't yet taken confirmation. The United Church has since declared that we're all part of this church together, but for legal reasons, we still have to make that motion. So I see we've already had 12 people online vote in favor. So, uh, uh, Stephen, we don't have a mover and seconder yet. Uh, do I have a move by Paul Rupel, seconded by Rob Seamus? Excellent. All those in the room in favor of this motion, hands in the air. Excellent. That motion carries. Motion number two, or seven, seven pardon me. Um, and I hope this one passes. Otherwise, we'll say goodbye to everybody online. Um, the we move that the congregation approve the annual general meeting to be conducted in the hybrid format, that is online and in person. May I have a move by Rob Seamus, seconded by Rupal. Excellent. 
All Paul. Here's Robin Paul. All those in favor? Motion carries. Excellent. Oh dear. Uh, number eight, review of holy manners. Well, who was going to discuss that? I don't know if it was me. Pardon? Be nice to each other. There we go. We're in a church. Be Christian. Um, and the acronym is BRAVE, and I can't remember what the letters mean. It's not, it's not in the official Okay, it's not in the middle. Anyhow, throughout the past year, at the board level at least, we've been following a concept called Holy Man Manners, and it's basically an extension of what Jesus teaches us in the Bible, which is treat others the way you wish to be treated, but also don't be afraid to speak up. So, item number nine, reviewing the agenda. So the agenda is in the first page of the physical copy of the annual report, um, otherwise page two or three in your PDF version. Again, there should not be any surprises there. It's last year's agenda with this year's uh, year. So may I have a motion to approve, moved by Lynn, seconded by Amanda. Any questions about the agenda or additions that anyone wishes to have? Otherwise, seeing none, I will call the vote. All those in favor of the agenda. All right, that motion carries. Item number 10, to review the previous minutes of the prior congregational meetings. And I believe we've only had one since last year, and that will be on page five of the annual report. It should look very familiar because it's pretty much what this year's meeting is going to be as well and what 2020's was. And I believe everything there is correct. So if I may have a mover and a seconder, moved by Leslie Litwiller, seconded by Edith Hills. Mm -hmm. Leslie Litwiller. Uh, any corrections that anybody may have noticed? Otherwise, seeing none, given those online have voted already, all those in favor in the, in the room. Excellent. Motion carries. Um, well, I. Yeah, okay, perfect. Then, um, next we have all the annual information reports for committees and personnel, and that's pretty much everything else in the um, annual report up to page 25, which is the Finance Committee report, and after that is the budget and the finance statements, which we'll get to momentarily. Uh, there is one minor correction in the trustees report uh, through an error, who knows where, we neglected to mention that Bob Cooney is also a trustee for which we thank him. Uh, and some of you might have been surprised because later on we'll approve all the trustees and Bob will be reappointed, but he wasn't listed as a trustee. But um, that was a mistake. So any questions on the reports as they were? Mary? I think this one over here is the active one. This one here, yeah. <clears throat> I know this is, is this working? Arthur? Yes? No? no. I oh, can there we project, go. But I don't know if people online would hear. Um, this is not my report. This, and I was reading them this morning, and Pat, in the Wayside report, the information about the senior chair yoga is last year's information, not this year's information. So I don't know how we want to deal with that. Do you have anything verbal you'd like to share? Right. I just happen to have done that. Okay. <laughs> and I will give this to you. Speak close. Oh, wow. It does work. Maybe just repeat what you said before then. Okay. That's better, right? Okay. So, and I will give this to you, Mike, so you don't have to write it on the fly. Um, in person, senior. Oh, I got new glasses yesterday, and I can't figure out where to hold things so that I can read. In-person seniors chair yoga restarted in January 2022 with Jane Hembroff. Up to 15 seniors from Emmanuel and the broader community participate regularly on Wednesday mornings. The participants of the program report significant improvements in their balance, strength, and flexibility. In September, we were very excited to be able to restart the after-class social time, which includes a light snack. This is an important component of the program. Student volunteers from WLU support the program. And I hope Pat doesn't have any concerns about me changing the report. 
All right, thank you, Mary. <clears throat> Any questions about anything else? Otherwise, I will ask a mover to it. Pardon? Oh, uh, I think we'll just change the motion to accept the information reports as amended. So if I can have a mover, moved by Amanda Broderick, seconder, second by Leslie Littwether. All those in favor, that motion carries. Now I must apologize, as Mary was reading her bit, I realized we skipped the in memoriam session, section. And I think this is as an appropriate part as any. Um, Karen, I don't know if you as the incoming clerk of session want to read the in memoriam part, since David has left the room. And so I will turn it over to Karen. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, good. Uh, please join me in remembering the pe members of Emmanuel who passed away in 2022. Norma Schantz and Alfreda, or as we know her, Alfie Wall. Um, they are gone, but not forgotten and forever woven into the fabric of what we call Emmanuel. Please take a moment, a few seconds to remember them and bring forward your stories of how they were involved in your life. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Um, I should also note <clears throat> on the church register report, we neglected Crystal's Brod Crystal Broderick's baptism um, to list it, but she was baptized last year. Um, Neil, one point. Um, you've been declaring the motions carried before the people online have finished voting. Oh. So just slowing oh, down sorry. a little would be good. Okay. Sorry, Carol. Um, every time I glance over, I see the bar chart going along and would say, you know, it says like 12 of 12. Um, I realize I don't actually know how many eligible voters there are online. I think it says 21, but I don't know for sure. Certainly that last one, I was still trying to push the button. And as I say, you were done. Okay, sorry, I was panicking because when I looked up there, it looked like you were all finished and we're ready to move on. So I will slow down. All right, next, I am going to, I guess, call forward Wendy with our 2022 financial statements. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, so my treasurer's report for 2022, once all the accounts were reconciled, was, um, as you all know, 2022 was a difficult and trying year. We were able to slightly surpass our budgeted general offerings to reach our goal of 139000 Thank you all for your continued support and generosity. Our rental income was unfortunately under budget due to Vera's place being vacant for a period of time and the loss of ESL, one of our regular full-time renters. Our other rents was able to make up some of that difference as they were not restricted due to COVID this year. Our Emanuel Emerging Fund received a final $7,500 $7, in the 2022 pledges and the Emanuel Emerging Campaign has now been completed. Our overall assets equal $360,000 as per the balance sheet, which is attached. Our assets have decreased by $76,000, largely due to the deficit that was run by the general fund. The accounting fund balances report attached with the balance sheet in thousands confirms how the assets are designated between our various funds. The rising cost for utilities has definitely added to our overall expenses. As well, Vera's place had some plumbing issues which significantly added to the water bills, but repairs have been made. Further, increasing property insurance costs have been a concern over the last few years. The United Church of Canada has responded by creating their own insurance program and providing coverage to us at significantly lower rate, which will result in approximately $5,000 of savings in 2023. 
In 2022, we were again not required to pay off any portion of our line of credit through TUC, the Toronto United Church Council, and we're only required to make monthly interest, monthly interest payments. We have, however, decided to make the payment and pay them off for 2023. So thank you all for hanging in with us for 2022, and I look forward to a prosperous 2023. Does anyone have any questions about the reports? Uh, I'm not sure if this is the right. I'm not sure if this is the right space to ask this question, but I'll ask it and you can respond as um, appropriate. First, I wanted to start off saying how much I appreciate all the work that board members and committee members have done over the past year, recognizing the deficit and trying to work towards rectifying that. When I did look at the financial statements, it made me wonder, are we still able to support the church? Um, so my question is, as we're moving forward to calling a new minister, will there be a time when we get our updated financial status and um, recognizing whether we can call a full-time minister or three-quarter minister, whatever. So that's my question. Not sure if this is the right time to ask it. So I'm not the finance person, but I am the ministry and personnel, the chair of ministry and personnel. So there are a series of reports that we need to file with the region before we are allowed to call a new full-time minister. That was one of the reasons why we went with an appointment rather than a full-time minister or a part-time minister or any permanent called ministry. Those reports are reviewed by the region and they'll either approve them or not. And so we will have some feedback from the region about what they think is reasonable. The board met repeatedly through- November and December? through November and December to institute some strategies to try to stabilize the finances. So um, things like increasing the rental profile, um, we're looking at some wedding rentals, there's all sorts of things we're doing to try and stabilize the finances. Um, Neil's been working with the preschool and as I understand it, they may be renting an additional room, which will help us stabilize things as well. For this period of time, we're gonna have a three quarter time minister and we're gonna see how that works. We're gonna see if it's realistic and we're going to see how that will impact our finances. So to answer Carolyn's question and Carolyn, thank you for asking it. There are multiple pieces at play in terms both of stabilizing the finances and figuring out where we are ongoing. Does that answer what you wanted to know? Yes. Oh yes, absolutely. And we've we've really wanted to communicate with the congregation about where we're at, and I, I hope that we're doing a good job of that. And if we're not, please reach out to Neil. Neil's the chair of the board, and if there's something we need to be telling you that we're not, we're happy to tell you. Like, we, we want to communicate with you. You need to understand what's happening as much as anyone else does. So if there's anything else that people want to know, please please reach out to Neil or come find a board member, any member of the board will be happy to either answer your questions or if they can't, we're happy to, to engage in more communication to make sure everyone is on an equal footing. Is there any other questions about this piece? Paul? Yeah, so Paul's pointing out that what the board is going to do is at three months, so this appointment lasts for six months. At three months, we're going to take some time and we're going to review whether or not we want to renew the appointment or whether we want to move to called ministry. 
Um, and obviously we will communicate with the congregation once we sort that out. Um, so it won't be that you're going to find out six months from now very abruptly we're doing one thing or the other thing we're going to review it at three months so that we have a chance to give Brenda some notice about what it is we intend to do over the next six month period and so we have a chance to give you some notice about what we would like to do over the next six month period and that also will give you another place to give us some feedback if there's something that you're concerned about or something you would like to see changed. And at that time, we're obviously going to talk about whether or not three quarter time is working for us. Are there any other questions? Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. So just further to that about sharing information with the congregation, it's um, our goal that about every three months we can provide an update of where we are so far in the particular year. So the next update would be coming mid April, because that way Wendy will have that produced generated three months worth of material. And so we can say this is what 2023 is looking like so far. And so ideally, if everything falls into place in the right way it does, it would be March, we do one in June, we do one at the end of September. And then sometimes when Christmas gets the way we don't always do one at the very end of the year, because that by that point, we're so focused on pulling together the annual report and year end and everything else like that. So I'm just grabbing my agenda. So, and so as Amanda said, yes, we have had, um, in particular, the preschool has asked about renting some additional space from us. So that's gonna, it, it hasn't been confirmed yet, but we're in, the, in that, that tennis match where we name a number, they name a number, and then we think about it. But we're hoping, and I think they're hopeful they can start their new programming, I think at the end of March. Um, I think they had a pool going with how fast we could react, and I think we've surprised them all. So that's been a plus. Um, as we noted elsewhere, KW Glee has more, I think, more than replaced the lost revenue from St. Louis. So that was a positive thing. Um, we are hoping and praying that we can get towards a balanced budget this year. And having minister at three quarter time is definitely helping for this year. And we've also made some other. Um, minor staffing tweaks as well, hoping to get there. Um, and as always, a few more heartbeats in the building wouldn't hurt either, um, but that takes its time. So if there are no further questions about the 2022 financial statements, Linda. But Linda, do you want to just come up here because the people online can't hear you? We do not. I would ask for a mover and a seconder. No? Okay. We'll move by Rob, seconded by Paul. Okay, I have a question about Wayside. Um, I noticed that we're running a deficit of $17,000. And I just was wondering, um, are we planning to do anything about that? Yes. So, um, can you just remind me, Linda, which page were you looking at? Which page in the just page 42 all right okay so page 42 the top bunch of numbers. So um, this is where some of the finances can get a little complicated the budget that we'll be discussing momentarily is a general fund budget, we have. On, on, the, on paper, 13 different fund, funds where our money is put in little in various pockets. In reality, I think there's only about five or six that are actually active. So we've got the general fund budget. We've got the mission and service budget. We have the major repair or emerging fund budget. Um, and we've also got the wayside budget. So in theory, the money flows in and out of those various budgets and they are generally separate from each other. However, in Wayside's case, because we recognize the cost to the building that Wayside, um, you know, as if they were a tenant on their own, some of the money that comes from Wayside is transferred into the general fund to cover some of the general fund expenses that are carried out to support Wayside. So that's why that particular number is the deficit there. Um, and now Pat, I don't think Pat is online, but I know generally when the alarms went off in September and we were trying to figure out how we're we going to bring the general fund back to a 
um, balanced position or as close as we could as possible. The decision was made at that time to increase the amount of money that we requested from Wayside to support the general fund. Wendy, are you coming back up to share something? Okay. Do you, do you want us to do it down there? Neil, do you want me to show anything on the screen there? Um, page 42, if you want to. So further to Neil's comments, further to Neil's comments regarding Wayside, um, in discussions with Pat, um, Wayside and the general fund also share the cost of Kalina as well. So part of that comes into there, as well as such expenses as Swan cleaning um, supplies, Frank's maintenance supplies, um, and the garbage pickup. So Wayside has agreed to pay a portion of those expenses as well. And 2022, late of 2022, was the first time that those expenses had been transferred from the Wayside Fund back into the general fund. So hopefully that can explain some of those finances. Mary? There's a Mary's just pointing out, if you look on the column number five, so the fourth, fifth column over the one on the very far right, you'll see that last year, um, the situation was reversed to Wayside. So they had a $51,000 income against $27,000 worth of expenses. Um, now I can't recall off the top of my head why there was that larger jump in Wayside uh, in 2021, but I think our hope is eventually those numbers will equal each other. And I think some of the challenges sometimes if funding comes in in one year, it has to be spent in another year. So our, our hope is it's not gonna be deficit position long-term, Linda. So the question was, which, what were the various sources of income to Wayside this year? Mostly it comes from within, I believe. We do have a couple of, we have one reoccurring one that comes in on a monthly basis for the Wayside Food Bag Program. Um, I can't honestly say if I remember receiving it yet for 2023, um, but we definitely received it through all of 2022. We do have um, another church that had sent funds as well, but it's not anything that's a regular nothing we can count on but most of the funds do come through through the church members so if you want a better picture of that if you look on page 34 in the annual report uh which is the budget document but there kind of provides a rough breakdown of the funding that came into wayside in 2022 so um you'll notice there in the second column from the left the 2022 actual and i recognize the, the number there doesn't may not match Wendy's to the T, just based on when she gives me reports, but um, we're close enough. But you'll see that about $17,000, about $18,000 came in in receivable donations. And as Wendy said, a good chunk of that is from members of the congregation. Um, and then we had about $7,700 come in through fundraising events, and that was largely the Ride for Wayside. Um, I know of the two, the ride for Wayside, just because I've knowing who made the various donations, I think that's about a 50-50 split in terms of people outside the congregation who made donations versus people inside the congregation. I know um, Wayside is always optimistic. They can find other sources of funding and encourage more giving within the community. Um, I'm just not aware of what actions they perhaps stopped taking and whether or not those have followed through. Of course, um, COVID has been difficult for all organizations in the region, um, not the least of which is it's cut down the volunteer pool. And also when you go out into the community, try to fund, raise funds, more often not the responses, but I've given to 16 other organizations in town. I don't have any money left over to give to you. We will see. So I would encourage, you know, that might be a more of a patch in the Wasted Operations Committee question to see, do they have other thoughts? Um, because I, we also, um, Kalina was added last year in 2022. Um, and that was after Pat had concluded that it was important to have somebody who was a consistent present for the Wayside operating team um, as volunteers were rotating in and out for vacations, holidays, or other things. So on one hand, Kalina was an addition that I don't recall, was I think we thought about for last year, but um, I don't actually, well, yeah, was budgeted for last year, and then she was finally hired last year as well. So, Neil, Neil, uh, Bob Cooney has yes, a question. Bob Cooney has a question online. Bob, Bob I'm Cooney gonna... has a question. 
allow you to, if I'm okay. going to ask you to talk. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Yeah, because when you put it, I guess you could take the PDF down. When you put the PDF up, we can't see anybody else on the screen. So, ready go ahead, Bob. Here, Bob. Bob, you'll need to unmute yourself if you want to speak. Oh, I guess he's having trouble there, Neil. So send me a, a text message there, Bob, and we'll try to get you in here. Go ahead, Neil. Okay. Um, I guess while we're waiting for Bob to um, share his question. So I guess I was, are there any other further, okay. further questions? Oh. Uh, this is Flora and Bob will speak through my phone. Okay. Yeah, on, on, uh, can you hear me now? We can hear you, Bob. Yeah, yeah. Um, on, on Wayside, on Wayside, can you uh, confirm there's one uh, staff member on yes, the expenses for Wayside? I believe there's one staff member and I don't see that. Yes, well, this is, again, this is one of those tricky things. So Kalinda's salary is paid for by the general fund. So if you're looking at page 34, that draft budget, um, there is no line in the expenses side that says Kalina. But if you look down, I believe, oh dear, I think either it's either somewhere in um, administration or rent. I think it might be in one of those two spots is where Kalina's um, salary is paid for by Wayside. And so Wayside transfers the money and at the highest level, it's all in the same CIBC bank account. But for our purposes, it goes from the Wayside envelope to the general envelope. And then the general envelope is the one then that pays Kalinda's salary. So, okay. thank you, Bob. Yep. Okay, if there are no further questions on the 2022 financial statements, I will, there's, I believe, can you just confirm who moved and seconded, Mike? Yeah, why did you take that? Why did you take my machine? Okay, so I believe it was moved by uh, Rob, seconded by Paul. All those in favor of the return of the financial statement as presented. Okay, I've got most of the hands up in the sanctuary. Is the poll is running? We've got nine, ten. We we're aiming for 22 online, or at least the majority. You have to vote for the motion. Right. Okay. All right. And I guess there's also, I know there's a couple of participants online, which are actually the sanctuary camera, which can't vote, and Stephen, who is there twice. All right. We have 14 of 22 online have voted and those in the sanctuary have voted as well i guess for the sake of clarity are there any opposed in the sanctuary to statements i hope not because we can't change them seeing none the financial statements are adopted i'd like to then invite john schmidt forward to present his examination report of the 2022 financial statements and john i guess if you just want to use the, the uh, mic down there that'll work So I, hey, I'm a retired uh, public accountant, so I, you, pretty, you pretty much have to eat it closer. I'm a retired uh, public accountant, and uh, I'm always gratified when uh, Neil asks me to come over and uh, do your uh, do your financial review of, uh, of the church accounts. I want to recognize uh, Wendy's assistance. Uh, it really uh, went uh, quickly this year. Um, you should, uh, again, when you're reading the, uh, uh, the report, uh, you want to be very careful to note that this is not an audit. Uh, it is uh, the specified procedures in the report that I undertake, and uh, that's all. 
um, there would be a lot more necessary to do even a, a review, uh, a standard review. So, um, again, I'm very happy to uh, assist you, assist the church with this uh, financial report every year. Are there any questions? That's the orange page in the hard copy for those who are yep. interested. Stephen, are there any questions online? Not seeing any. Not to see any, all right. Then seeing none, I will ask for a motion to approve, moved by Paul Ruppel, seconded by Leslie Litwiller. All those in favor of accepting the examination of the 2022 financial statements. Motion carries on in person, and I see. Very good. Minutes. I'll see you guys again next year. Seventy-six <laughs> percent online. And seventy-six percent online. That motion carries. Well done, John. Thank you very much. Next, I will call Paul Ruppel forward to present the 2023 budget. And for those of you following in paper, that budget is on page 26 of your PDF. Paul or Neil, let me know if you'd like the budget on the screen. I'll leave it off for now. If you need it on the screen, let me know. Okay, I'll put it up. You can talk to the mic. Okay, we spent a little, a fair bit of time going through this budget and some of the things, the better aspects of the budget have already been discussed by Amanda in terms of uh, some of the interesting people that are in here we have a glee club on a saturday which comes in somewhere up to 200 250 300 people and they are contributing about ten thousand dollars this year um we have the possibility of another uh increase in income from the um, co-op nursery um we've been in fact i think neil was just in the process of finalizing it i emailed them back this morning that I thought what we had offered was uh, a good compromise. Um, we had, uh, I think Amanda also suggested that our insurance costs are going down by approximately $5,000. That's because the United Church is now going to self-insure themselves. Um, those are some of the highlights. If there's any other questions on our budget, I would be happy to answer them. Oh, the biggest one, of course, is the reduction the, uh, in the ministerial uh, staff that affects the uh, what we pay out in pension and the other other benefits so there's a, su a substantial saving there for next year so hopefully all these things will we will end up with close to a balanced budget and I believe uh, and Amanda someone mentioned we are are we online with this these wedding um, uh, through do we do it through Facebook Okay, we're, we're advertising on a wedding based website as well that what we have at the church and all the facilities we have so hopefully that gives us some more income as well. Are there any other questions for next year. Okay, well, I would also like to thank Wendy for the dedication that she has in this job. <laughs> It's sometimes I think a little frustrating for her, but we sort of like to have her reports available on the second Tuesday night of every month and she's able to do that I think 11 months out of the year. <laughs> so thank you again Wendy. If there are any questions I would propose them, I would ask for a motion to accept the report. Right. Moved by Lynn. Seconder. I think, Paul, you could do it because you're not the chair. Hmm? Oh, Carol. Carol Moksula seconds. All right. Any further questions about the budget? I, sh I should also just denote that the increased rent in the preschool is not listed in the budget because after we passed at the board level and after we printed the reports was when they reached out about the increase for this year. And I'm also a firm believer of don't count on the money until it lands in the bank or until they've agreed to pay it. So next year, it should be higher. All those in favor of accepting the budget as circulated. I'm seeing a majority in the sanctuary.
And I'm seeing a majority online, so that motion passes. Mary, would you like to come forward and present the outreach budget? So this is the second fund um, of all the funds that we manage. And this would be on page 24 of your annual report. Let's try, let's try this again to get everything where I can see. It's now the new glasses. I have to hold it here. I have to hold it here to see it close up. So it's, okay. Um, last year, at the end of the year, we came, uh, we picked up and we got enough to balance our budget. We do have a surplus. Sorry. So in the final 2022, at the bottom, there's surplus or deficit. And there is a deficit. And we often show that because we're. Um, we hold back funds until we know how much money we've got and then we spend them the next year and it, and that had accumulated to quite a large sum and we've been gradually paying it down and um, by the end of this year the only amount it's only 20 so, so it's the it's a cumulative deficit and we're trying to no we had a cumulative surplus so we're trying to spend that because we're required to by law. I probably don't need to eat this. Um, and then for 2023, the 2,400 at the bottom is the amount of offerings that we still had not spent from 2022. And that probably makes no sense to anybody. So trust, <laughs> I could just say, trust me. Um, <laughs> there's laughing happening here. <laughs> Um, it's really not much different than the other years and the programs that we support out of the outreach portion. So there are two parts that I always like to remind people of. There's two aspects to the money that you give us. One is called United Church of Canada Mission and Service. That's very confusing because the name of our committee is Mission and Service. But that money is not actually spent by the Mission and Service Committee. It's spent by the United Church of Canada. And a good example right now would be money is probably going to help out in the Ukraine and also to help out uh, in Turkey and Syria. It also supports ministry and some local um, programs, but mostly it's a national and an international focus. So the money that you designate on your offering that says outreach, that is the part that goes to serve a manual or that the committee can spend at their discretion. And that covers in on this budget, that covers the part that's called Emmanuel programs. So the benevolent fund, the um, children's time collection is an in and an out, so it doesn't really support that. Our needle craft and our garden and um, the end, uh, why is there 5,300? Oh, that's what we're spending out of last year's unspent money. So just remember that when you're, you're designating your offering, uh, we want to support the, um, this thing is going to be my nemesis today. Uh, we want to support the national church with mission and service and the local church with outreach. And we do really appreciate how everything, um, how everybody has been supporting that. And I will also uh, include a thank you to Wendy that all the work we've done over the last, and Pat, that we've done to reorganize the funds over the last, last few years now means that I can take the report that is produced by her and just use it. I don't have to move everything around and try to figure out what we have. So. It has been a lot of good work, and we're really um, pleased with what's happening. And she gets the reports to me at the beginning of the month, which is really nice. Um, so that being very long-winded, does anybody have any questions? All right. Seeing none, I'll ask for a mover and a seconder to accept the outreach budget. And moved by Linda, seconded by Lynn. So just as a point of information, Lynn, um, if you flip over to page 38 in the annual report, you'll see the at the bottom, you'll see the statement of all the accounts. So um, we have 
previously just passed general fund budget says uh, fund number one. We're in the process of discussing fund number two, the outreach fund. Um, funds three th through 13, because they don't have large amounts of ins and outs each year, we don't specifically pass a budget for them. Um, and in particular, number three is the refugee fund. Those are funds that we hold in trust for refugees that are incoming. So that's the one that's most often likely to have a big deficit one year and a big surplus another year. Because when we agree to support a refugee, refugee sponsorship, and that doesn't necessarily mean that we're the ones actually managing the, the refugee when they come in, but some other group has approached us um, and we're working with them. But that group has to have money held in trust somewhere to prove to the government that they can support that refugee when they arrive. So in that case, the money lands in our bank account and may sit there for one, two, three, five years before being drawn upon when that family arrives. So I understand for Mary, at least two, if not, I mean, I think we had, how many people, how many groups are we holding trust for? Okay, so we, some, we have somewhere between four and five family or group, refugee groups that we're holding funds in trust for. And of those four or five, two or three, two have reached the next stage, which means at some point in the next year, hopefully not, you know, knock on wood, they will be arriving and that money will then be drawn down. So at next year's annual meeting, when you look at the annual, at the refugee fund, you may see, oh my goodness, there was almost no income in, but why is all this money going out of the refugee fund? And that's just because we've had it for multiple years waiting. So with that in mind, all those in, uh, did we already pass the, I did call the vote? I can't remember. Okay, I will call the vote. All those in favor of the average budget. Excellent, that motion passes as we had majority online as well. I get to turn the page. All right, nominations. Amanda, do you have any specific nominations you wish to share with the congregation? So Amanda and Arthur are two person nomination committee. Um, they're generally active throughout the year because we call them up and ask them to fill holes. Okay, so this is as good a time as any to remind all of you that if you're interested at all in volunteering for a committee at Emmanuel United Church, I'm Amanda and you can come find me anytime. And Arthur is <clears throat> upstairs where you can't see him, but I think you all know who Arthur is. And so if there's anything you're interested in doing, or even if you don't know what you're interested in doing, but you'd like to find something, please come and talk to Arthur and I. Um, new committee membership is important. It helps, it helps us have fresh ideas and we like that, that's a good thing. So for motions, motion to accept Karen Dixon as the clerk of, of session. So I'll move that. Paul will second it. Okay. Uh, also, I just wish to thank David for his long service up until the end of December. Yeah. And Karen, it's, the circle has turned, now it's Karen's turn. And we realized over the past 20 or 30 years, they seem to rotate. So now it's Karen's turn. So all those in favor of Karen being our clerk of session. Excellent, thank you. And okay, we, and- We've got a motion, we've got majority online as well. Motion passes. Okay. To allow the trustees to complete their work every year, they should be affirmed as trustees. This is like a legal requirement that we need to do. So motion to accept Pat Babcock, Stephen Dixon, Chantel Thompson, Rob Seamus, Bob Cooney, and Ken Nethercott as trustees. So I'll move that. Moved by Amanda. Do I have a second? Seconded by Arthur Hills. And I wish also to thank Paul Latimer for his long service as a trustee as he is stepping down. All those in favor in the room. That motion. Uh, we're still working from uh, there we go. We've got a majority online. That motion passes. Okay, and then throughout the year, um, sometimes people leave committees or sometimes someone volunteers to sit on a committee. And so the board approves those appointments throughout the year. And in order to be empowered to do that, we need a motion at this meeting to, to be able to do that. So the motion is that the Board of Emmanuel United Church be empowered to approve committee appointments until the next annual general meeting. Okay, moved by Amanda, seconded by Rob Seamus. So all, any questions on that? Otherwise, all those in favor? Motion carries in the room. 
and motion carries online. And I'll just take a second to thank, it's in the report, but I just wanna take a second to thank all of the volunteers, past and present, who have made Emmanuel what it is and who are making Emmanuel what it is. Your work is important to us and it helps us continue to run. We can't run the church um, without the volunteers. So thank you all for all of your assistance. All right, thank you, Amanda. Um, now I realize, uh, 17 is election of 2023 officers. I don't believe we have any new officers. So I think we will pass over that one to any other business. If anybody online or in the room has something they wish to ask a question about. Otherwise, we will roll forward to the next thing. Any hands up online, Stephen? Not seeing any either, Neil. You know? Nope. Okay. Hearing none, my uh, final duty before adjournment is just offering thanks. Again, thanks to those who stepped back in the past year. Um, thanks to Jen for her time with us, and we wish her well. Thanks to Roz for coming to shepherd us through the next phase, and to Brenda on her arrival here. Thanks, as always, to the church staff. And because uh, the, without them, I would have a lot more work to do here, and I have enough. Um, thanks as well to the church board. Every month we have our small group ministry and we got the joy last fall of doing it every week. I'm hoping not to do that again this year. So without further ado, I am going to ask for a motion to adjourn at 11.30. Moved by Lynn, seconded by Rob Seamus. All those in favor? Um, in person, approved. Online is majority. All right, so that mo uh, meeting is adjourned at 11.30. Our closing hymn is More Voices Deep in Our Hearts, 150, sorry, More Voices 154. And after that, I'll invite Roz Ford to do our final commissioning and benediction. a common story telling creation that we are one deep in our hearts there is a common purpose deep in our hearts there is a common goal deep in our hearts there is a sacred message, justice and peace in harmony. Deep in our hearts, there is a common longing. Deep in our hearts, there is a common song. Deep in our hearts, there is a common current fleeing to freedom like a storm. Deep in our hearts, there is a common vision. Deep in our hearts, there is a common song. Deep in our hearts, there is a common story telling creation that we are one. Let us go out of here seeking justice, loving kindness, and living humbly with our God. Let's go out of the church. And now, may God, our Creator, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer, be and abide with us all this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.